Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Thoughts Behind the Wheel. Uh, maybe I should actually date these. You know, it is Sunday, August 20... Crap. I've come up with an instant problem with dating these. I have to remember what the day is. 23rd, I think. <laughs> oh, boy. Um... But I should do that. I should do that because in these ones, it actually kind of matters when I, uh, when I post them. Uh, because, you know, a lot of times I'm talking about things that might be time sensitive or relevant. So, you know, who knows? Anyway, it's August 23rd, I think. Sunday, around 6.58 p.m. We're starting riffs in like an hour. Yeah, it's going to be fun. But y y by the time this goes up, you won't be able to see it. Um... <laughs> So, uh, a lot of you wanted me to talk about, or to go on a tangent, about uh, pea shooters, gun control. I mentioned something about it in the last uh, Thoughts Behind the Wheel, and everyone's like, yes, talk about that. So I will, but with a preference, and, uh, and with, a, uh, with a preface uh, condition. And uh, this will probably apply for several Thoughts Behind the Wheels. Look, my opinions are just my opinions. I think they're right, but I don't think they're any less valid than anyone else's. See, I'm in a bit of a tricky situation because I'm a let's player, not a social commentator. I'm not um, one of those people that go up on YouTube and pick a side and fight for that side. And, and you know, like uh, like a creationist versus atheist is a great one. You know, I don't, I don't pick a side and make... Uh, a bunch of videos about how these guys, this side or that side's dumb, uh, because uh, that's not what I do. I make Let's Plays, and my job is to make people smile and laugh. And um, if I were to do that on a consistent basis, if I were to pick a side, that's an entire other side that couldn't watch my stuff and enjoy it. Because as much as they should be able to separate their personal views of my opinions with uh, whether something's funny or not, they can't, and that's human nature. So the more political or whatever I get, the the more chance that someone who watches my stuff goes, I don't agree and I can't watch his stuff anymore. And I don't want that. Um, I, so while I won't necessarily run from my opinions when they're asked, if people asked, I'm not ashamed of them. So I feel that I should admit them and, and uh, talk about them if people really want me to. But I also don't want people to... Um, to think differently of me because I do it, if that makes sense. Uh, well, I, no, that's not really fair, nor is that true. Obviously, people will think differently about me the more they find out about me. What I mean to say is, I'm not doing this, I never share my opinions in the intent of making people look dumb. I don't think. At least not yet, I haven't. Anyway, so, the Second Amendment, gun control. When it was made, when America was made, when the Constitution was founded, we had just rebelled against the government. We were hypersensitive about a government uh, becoming oppressive like the one we just left, quote unquote. Um, and we wanted to ensure that no government could ever be oppressive to the people again. So they wrote the Second Amendment, basically allowing everyone to keep their own personal firearms. And this was a great deterrent. Uh, I do want to explain a little bit more about what I said yesterday. Yesterday, what I said was the Second Amendment doesn't work as much anymore because um, your guns and rifles have got nothing on the government's tanks and missiles, which is true. But I didn't mean to give the impression that uh, because our country has a bunch of guns, it wouldn't hurt or hinder our government in any way if they try to take us over. Of course, if you have firearms, even pistols but, or rifles or whatnot, yes, you can you can cause uh, what, a resistance or, or give problems to the American government, absolutely. But it's no longer an effective deterrent. And I'll explain why. When the Second Amendment was made, the common people had the same level of weaponry that the government did. Muskets. Everyone had muskets. Now, the government sure had some cannons, but not enough to really make a war. Um, the, for the most part, everyone was on a level playing field. The government had muskets. People had muskets. That was about it. So the government knew that if I raise an army and try and be uh, uh, oppressive to the populace, they really outnumber me. And they have pretty much the same weapons I do, which means I am going to have a really hard time winning this. That 
is an effective deterrent for a government saying, like, I don't know if I can do this. That doesn't exist anymore. If the government, for whatever reason, got tyrannical on our butts and decided to take us over, would they consider the fact that we're all armed with small arms? Sure. Would it be an effective deterrent? Absolutely not. Here's what they would think. Okay, they have small arms. That'll be a problem. That'll be a nuisance. They'll have some minor revolts that we'll have to put down. But here's what they won't think. My gosh, we can't beat them. Of course they can beat us. They've got way better and more advanced technology than the average American. They, it would be no question of whether or not they could oppress us. It would just be a question of how annoying we could be to them. That's what I meant by that. And that's why the Second Amendment's original purpose doesn't really stand anymore. It wasn't about what everyone makes it about today, which is just, look, whether we need guns or not, you take it away, you're taking away our freedoms. It's our freedoms. That, that wasn't the point. The point was to keep the government from going tyrannical, and that doesn't really work anymore. Uh, in order for it to work, the government would have to give us access to tanks and missiles, which they're not about to do. Um, so do I think the Second Amendment should, should exist? No, I, I really don't. And I, again, I love guns. I really do. I, I, I love shooting them. I love going to shooting ranges and firing guns and, and cleaning them and, and the way they smell. There's a lot I love about guns. But guns are designed to kill. Period. They are designed to kill and that's all they're designed to do. And we do not need that in our everyday populace. Um, now, hunting rifles for those who live in the, the country and need to hunt, and I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that in, you know, you show a license that you really hunt and you need to do it to eat and, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, sure. But here's the problem. You take a look at London or England or Korea or Japan or any of those countries where guns are not given to the local populace. The local populace does not have guns. Then you take a look at America's crime rate and you'll notice a big big difference. And I've heard all the arguments before. Well, those are different countries, so you can't use them. No, you absolutely can use them. Because while the culture of Japan and Korea and London may be very different than ours, their crime rates are fairly used. They still have criminals, and we still have criminals. And crime, the motivation for doing crime is the same. It's universal. The motivations for murder are universal. Whether it be passionate or predetermined, the motivations don't change culture from culture. I mean, sometimes they do, but the, the gist of it. If you're knocking off a bank, it doesn't matter what country you're in. If someone pissed you off and you shoot them in the head, it has nothing to do with what country you lived in. So, um, and a lot of people say, yes, well, the numbers are different, of course, but look at the number of people that live in there compared to the number of people who live here. No, 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 we're talking percentages here, not numbers. We're talking percentage of population. And the simple truth is the percentage of our homicide rate is through the roof compared to London and Korea and Japan. And the only big difference between us and them, yes, there are some cultural differences, but the only big one is who has guns and who doesn't, period. That's it. That's the only real difference. And if that wasn't evidence enough of why we don't need them, Look at every mass shooting tragedy that you can think of. Columbine, Sandy Hook, uh, Virginia Tech. All of those were perpetrated by guns. And that whole argument of, well, gun control only hurts the regular people. The criminals will always get guns. Gar -gar -gar. Every single one of those shootings I just mentioned were perpetrated by a person who obtained guns through legal methods. Either they got them from their parents who obtained guns from legal methods, or they bought the guns themselves through legal methods. None of the people I just mentioned had serious previous criminal histories that would prevent them from purchasing and owning a gun. So no, gun control would have kept those guns out of their hands. Columbine would not have happened. Virginia Tech would not have happened. Sandy Hook would not have happened period. You can debate whether or not the morality is right, but you cannot debate the fact that those three incidences in and of themselves would never have happened. At least they would have had to charge them with knives or something. Um, and, 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 and yeah, so I mean, would, would gangbangers still get guns? Uh, it would be a lot harder because if gangbangers could still get all the guns, 
what about all the gangbangers in Japan and London? Because they exist. I know we talk about how light, how polite everyone is in London and in and, and England, but they still do violent crime over there. And uh, yeah, the truth is, it would be much harder for them to acquire guns. Could they still do it? Sure. Can people still get meth? Sure. Is it much harder for them to get meth than they could if it was legalized? Absolutely. So I don't, I don't think that we should have guns. The normal population should have tons of guns. My brother is a strict, uh, strictly on the other side of this, and he has kids, and that might be part of it. He says, what am I going to do if a, a criminal walks into my house? How do I protect my children? How am I supposed to protect your nieces and your nephew? And he's asked me this before, and I've had to tell him it is a very, very, very sad fact that you bring up one of the few points that I, I, I have difficulty with, but here's the honest truth. You gotta look at the numbers. The number of people who have saved the lives of their family by having a gun are a drop in the bucket compared to the number of people who have been killed by families who have guns, if that makes sense. Is it a horrible thing to say, yes, I don't think you should have a gun to be able to protect your children? Oh, it's a horrible thing to say that. But if you add to that by taking away your gun and taking away everyone else's gun, far fewer people will die. And it's really hard to distance myself because this is my family we're talking about. And I love my nieces and I love my nephew to death. Uh, and it's not like I'm condemning them to die. The chances of someone walking into his home and threatening the lives of his children is incredibly small. And it would be much smaller if we didn't have guns. But it still exists. And I still am telling him, yes, the lives of thousands of people are more important to me than the lives, the possible deaths of your children. And that's horrible to say. It really is. And I don't want to be taken the wrong way, but it's true. It is true. My nieces and my nephews are more important to me, yes, but they are not more important than anyone else's niece or anyone else's nephew on the grand scheme of things. And by taking away a little bit of their safety and giving an enormous amount of safety to the rest of the population, I think it's worth it. Oh. I feel horrible saying that, but it's the simple truth. So no, I don't think we need guns in America. I really don't. You know what I think would be cool for all those people like me who love shooting guns? Have gun ranges with permits that are allowed to keep the guns and you are allowed to go there and you are allowed to shoot them. And you know what, have like some obstacle courses and things like that. Have it be like a Six Flags, a place you go to enjoy yourself. You don't need it at home. You don't. Oh, the problem is that it's too ingrained. It's too ingrained in our culture. It's too ingrained in our everything. They're never getting guns away from Americans. So no matter how much I think we don't need them, I, I will turn right around and say, no amount of gun control is really going to have a lasting effect. Um, I really don't think it will. I don't think you're ever taking guns away from us. It's just not going to happen. We are way too gun happy. Um, it's, no one's ever going to buy it. We have some gun control laws, yes, but the idea that the government's going to take away my guns, man, that's never going to happen. Because as much as you complain about the government, the government still is ultimately controlled by the people. And enough of the people would hate that, that it won't ever happen. So you don't ever have to worry about it. Period. I mean, maybe in a few hundred years when mentality has changed, but you'll be dead by then, so you're fine. Don't worry. I promise, unless some sort of catastrophic event happens to shake us out of our current state of mind, no one is going to be taking away America's guns anytime soon. So there's that. There's my rant on my opinion. Uh, you are more than welcome to disagree with me. I, I think that there are some fair points that are, are brought up. Um, and, 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 and I do want to make it really clear. I'm not suggesting that if you own a gun, you're a bad or horrible person. It's, it's within the law. It's well within your rights to own a gun. And I think a lot of people own guns for the right reasons. And that's fine. Hey, I got no objections with it. Really, I don't. Um, 
I just don't think that we need them. So, uh, what was there? No, there was another. There was someone uh, who asked me a few questions. They were from France, and they were wondering what my opinions were as an American. One was on the Second Amendment, uh, which I just answered. The other one was on um, Obamacare. Do I think Obamacare works? I am less qualified to discuss this. I am not an expert. I don't know. I haven't read all of Obama's care, Obamacare. I haven't seen a lot of stuff. My health care is handled by the VA. Because I was uh, a veteran in active duty during a time of war, I get health care benefits that are on par, maybe slightly better than what Obamacare people get for free. Uh, one of the small benefits of being a soldier. And uh, so it's not an issue that's touched me as much. However, from what I understand, most of the rest of the world does Obamacare and it works. And our healthcare system was broken. I know this. I know that before Obamacare, our healthcare system was hopelessly broken and it needed to be fixed. Now, was Obamacare the answer? I'm not necessarily sure. It looks like a good answer. A lot of people complain about it, sure, but a lot of people also have health care now that didn't have it before. And did our taxes go up? Sure. Um, I think a big problem people have is why should my taxes pay for that person's health care? And my answer to them is shame on you. Shame on you for not caring about your neighbor. You know? As long as your taxes don't kill you, as long as you can afford it, and I know that's a valid argument if you're saying, look, now taxes, I can't afford taxes, but that's not a valid argument for most people. And, and hey, I'm going to put this on pause because I'm about to order my food. Unless you want me to keep going to order my food. I'll pause it for now, but let me know if you want me to keep going whenever I'm ordering food because that would be weird. Uh, I'll be right back. There, I ordered my food. Um, so... Oh, uh, yeah, so Obamacare, look, I don't know. I think it works. However, if someone out there comes up with a really good, like, hey, Squee, you're wrong, and this is why, I, I, I am completely open to it because I'm not an expert on the issue. Um, I think in the end, it, it's better than the system we have. Is it the best system? I don't know. I, I really, I just, I don't know that one. Uh, and they asked a third one. Um... Oh gosh, they asked a third question. I can't remember what it was. Something about my thoughts on something. It was the Second Amendment. It was Obamacare. Oh boy. Um, oh, it was something about should everyone have accident and sickness insurance but raise taxes? Oh. Yeah, yeah, I'd personally be for that. I'm one of those people, I don't mind um, raising my taxes a bit to improve the health of our entire nation. Uh, you know, I was saying this before I paused it. Uh, a lot of people are like, uh, I don't want my taxes to go up to pay for someone else's thing. And I think that's a shame. I really do. As long as your taxes aren't killing you. Uh, you can survive without them. And yes, I know that is a valid argument for a few people, but for most people, your taxes scale to your pay rate. Look, my taxes feel painful when I pay them, but it's not like I can't live with them uh, even after Obamacare. Um, you know, I, 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 they are scaled to my pay range. I might have to be smart with my money and all that, but I can handle it, and most people can. And to say that money is more important to you than the health and well-being of even some strangers is sad to me. It is to me. Um, to an extent. I know that's a slippery slope because they're like, well, then how come you don't give your money to the starving children in Africa? Yeah, that is a slippery slope. I agree. But in this instance, if it's offered to me, we raise your taxes up a certain amount, but everyone gets accidental accident and sickness insurance, I'd be for it. I really would. Uh, that's just who I am, I guess. Now, do I think people are less if they disagree? Absolutely not. It's just my personal thing. Um, 
So yeah, uh, what were the other questions? When's Dragon Ball Z League starting? I don't know, man. I really don't know. Dragon Ball Z League takes a lot of time and effort. And um, doing the job I'm doing now, plus with my computer on the crate fritz and all that, I don't know. It will probably be some time before I can start DBZ League. And that's sad, I know. But hey, would you want me to start Dragon Ball Z League and not be able to devote the amount of time I need to it? No, of course not. No one wants that. It would be a horrible season. Best to wait until I have the time and can fully commit to it. Someone asked, um, someone asked what I thought of Charlie's Angels. Uh, I think they meant like the, the TV show and the movies. I don't know. Um, excuse me. I've seen the TV show. But uh, I don't remember much from it. I've seen the movies, and they were, you know, typical 1990s, early 2000 movies, which means that the plot really wasn't that serious. It was really, really hokey, and yeah, I was never a big fan of those kind of movies. So, um, I do like a lot of the older action type shows though I mean I, I think I remember liking Charlie's Angels but I know I love things like I love the A-Team I love Airwolf oh god I love Airwolf that was such a cool show I love Knight Rider you know those 80s action shows I don't think Charlie's Angels was 80s I think that was actually 70s I don't remember but I do do really enjoy those kind of shows but for that one in particular Gosh, I just don't remember too much about it. I know, uh, I know, there was Charlie, and uh, I know that um, the guy who you always saw wasn't Charlie. Charlie was always behind a speaker box. I forget who the guy was that they always interacted with. Oh well, uh, I'm grabbing my food. Uh, I gotta think of something else to talk about. I'm kind of out of questions. I think. Oh my gosh. I'm not sure that's happened before. I'll think of something. Oh, I don't know what to talk about. How about an interesting thought exercise for you guys? Kind of. Um, simple question. What color is the sun? And uh, not being a trick question here. This is a simple question. And I know that most of you will say, oh, the sun's yellow. Is it really yellow? Is it? Is it? Is it? Think about it for a second. If our sun was yellow, as in gave off yellow light, and I don't think I should have turned here. Huh. Anyway, as in it gave off yellow light. Um, have you ever had a yellow light bulb? I'm sure most of you have at some point, right? It makes everything look yellow doesn't it? Put a white sheet of paper underneath a yellow light bulb and what color does that sheet of paper look? It doesn't look white. It looks yellow. So if our sun was really yellow and a color of something is defined by what spectrum of light it gives off or bounces off of it, why doesn't all snow look yellow and not just the snow that's around the fire hydrants doggies like? Hmm? That would be because our sun is actually white. But why do we say it's yellow? Why do we say it's a yellow star, not a white star? Well, uh, my thoughts are this, and I don't know if this is the truth, I th but here, here's, here's what I thought. Now, here's what I think I read somewhere, sometime, some, at some point many, many years ago. If you look at the sun when it's right above your head at noon, you really can't tell what color it is. It's too bright to look at. You, you looking at it hurts, and you can't really tell a color. It's just, it's bright and painful. But if you look at the sun when it just rises or when it just sets, yes, it absolutely does look orangey yellow. Uh, it looks yellow or orange, depending on, you know, how much pollution's in the air. But um, does that mean that the sun's yellow? No, what it means is that it's going through more atmosphere to reach you, and because it's close to the horizon and it's getting, it's coming at you more at an angle and going through more atmosphere, it's more tinted yellow. Same reason why sunsets are so beautiful. The, the atmosphere tends to skew the light in pink and goldish colors. 
So that's probably why we got this idea that our sun is yellow. Um, the truth is that it's white. It may have a yellow tinge. It may peak in the yellow spectrum, but it is for all intents and purposes shedding white light. And um, yeah. Uh, so here's another interesting thought for you, thought exercise for you. And I know I covered this a long time ago in another Thoughts Behind the Wheel, but I have a lot of new people listening. So um, why don't things glow green when they get hot? When something gets hot, it starts to glow. Metal, for instance, when you heat metal up, it starts to glow. The sun, or any other star for that matter, it, it, illumin it emits light because it is so hot that it emits heat in the visual spectrum. Starting with red, going through the visual spectrum, if you know, it starts with red, goes from red to orange to yellow to green to blue to violet. And then you have ultraviolet, which means above violet, which our eyes can't see. But you'll notice the hotter something gets, the higher in the spectrum it turns, the higher the color it turns. And if we were to follow the color spectrum, that means that when you start heating things up, they should get red hot, which they do. You know, heat up an iron rod, look at your stove, it gets red hot. Then, when it gets a little bit hotter, it should get orange, and it does. And then it should get yellow, and it does. And then it should go green, and then blue, and then violet. But nothing ever goes green, does it? We don't have green suns. We don't have green glowing bars of metal. So what's the deal? What's going on? What's happening? Well, what's happening is two things. One, a trick of our eyes. Our eyes are not uh, exactly equipped to handle bright green light. Um, our eyes have color rods in them, which are red, blue, and green. Those rods, uh, any sh take different shades of those colors and you get any color that we can see. Um, and somehow when, when, when you see something that's glowing green, it somehow tricks our eyes and our eye has trouble seeing it. But that's not the true reason, that's part of it. That's part of the reason. But the true reason is simply this. When something glows red in the red spectrum, it's only emitting light in the red spectrum. When something glows yellow or orange, it's emitting light in the red spectrum and the yellow and orange spectrum. And when you start to get to the green spectrum, now you're emitting light in the red, orange, yellow, and green spectrum. And it all tends to blend together so that our eyes pick up white. Is it glowing green? Technically, yes. But it's also glowing a bunch of other colors that all kind of get lumped together. And it's really hard to see any individual colors, so we just see white. Now, then you say, well, how can we see blue? Blue, I believe, and don't quote me on this one, this one, because I wasn't expecting to talk about this today. Uh, we see blue because it starts getting so high up in the spectrum that it's no longer really emitting as much blues and yellows. So it's emitting more blue, I mean, uh, reds and yellows, so you can see the blue better. Uh, and then, of course, after that, the violet and the ultraviolet, you can't see because we're not equipped to see them. And uh, thankfully, we're also not equipped to see gamma radiation and x-rays and all those because they probably kill us yeah so yeah there's that um just some thoughts for you and uh we'll see you guys later okay bye ta-ta